Immunotherapy is great, most likely. At least we assume that it's really great. But, and this is unfortunately a, a, a but that is getting bigger, bigger and bigger. In HCC, we have seen very promising data with nivolumab, and I think patients that respond to immunotherapies have a really extremely good prognosis. The problem is that not all patients with um, uh, HTC really respond to, HTC, uh, to uh, immunotherapy. So similar to other solid tumors, we only see a response rate of around 20 to 25 percent. So for these patients, immunotherapy is really a great treatment. It has only a few side effects. It's very well tolerated by our patients, and these patients have long-term disease control. And as far as we can see it so far, we do not really have a decline in the function, and there's no effect of any of the underlying liver diseases. So this is really great and good news. On the other hand, you have a lot of patients that rapidly respond and that do not derive any clinical benefit from treatment with, um, so with uh, immunotherapies. So what, what we need are either biomarkers to identify those patients that respond um, to immunotherapies, or we need to find um, more or other innovative combination therapies where we combine local therapies or other systemic therapies with immunotherapies to increase the number of patients that really derive a benefit from uh, immunotherapies. So Checkmode 040 study investigated nivolumab in patients with hepatocellular carcinoma for systemic treatment. And uh, the, the patients in this was a phase 1-2 trial setting. So that means that in the first um, part they had a dose escalation study. They started with lower, low, uh, lower doses, doses, dosage and they finally found 3 milligram per kilogram as the optimal dose. And in the, there was also a dose expansion cohort. About more than 200 patients were treated uh, with, with nivolumab. Um, and um, the patients were quite heavily pretreated, so 70% of these patients had systemic treatment before, more than 70%, and I think more than 60% had sorafenib. And this was really, the, the, the study was just recently published, and uh, we, we found really impressive data in these patients. So the, um, in the patients who have been, have been pretreated and were not infected with HPV or HCV infection, the median overall survival was more than 13 months. And in the other cohorts, there was even not reached the median overall survival. It's al always difficult to do cross-trial uh, selections, but in the, in the resource uh, trial, so the patients who received regorafenib, a second-line treatment after sorafenib, the median overall survival was 10 months. And this was also really selected patients, but only the patients who came along with sorafenib, and this is just a small proportion of patients, could get regorafenib. So these were selected patients, and these were more or less not selected patients. So I think really the importance is um, of the efficacy, but also we had much less side effects compared to TKIs in these patients. So um, I think there was the 3-4, there was I think 25% or something like this um, of 3-4 free free grade um, toxicity, but it's more, all more, more or less laboratory findings. So this was not no diarrhea, no other severe disease. So this is uh, complications, so this is really, really good data.